Wonderful. This one is string to number. So we're going to convert a string literal to a number. So it sort of behaves like number.parseInt. And if we take the challenge here, we see we have a couple examples. So there's zero, and it's a string in the input, but a number in the output. And uh, this one here at the bottom is showing us that if we get something that doesn't parse as a string, then we should return never. So yeah. Um, I, I will say that this one is listed as hard because there's a feature of TypeScript, I think it was added in uh, 4.8, yeah, that um, I guess I could just, <laughs> does, do you know which one I'm talking about? Does it ring a bell? So I think, yeah, I think I can solve this off the bat. Actually. Okay, all right. Um, which is, I think, well, it depends on which angle we use. So let, let me talk through how I would solve this. We've got this txn string, um, which we're currently resolving to any. I'm thinking that we need to use something like this. T extends um, infer, let's say, uh, num, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then if we do infer the num, then uh, return the num. Now, the way of doing this is, well, I'm interested, will this even work? No, in fact, it won't work. So, okay, the, I'm aiming very, at the wrong close, thing though. here. I was thinking that we would do something like this. T extends string, infer extends number, and then that would work there. But I, no, hang on. Yeah, Num yeah, extends no, you, number. You, you actually got it. It's just that the, the syntax. So the only thing is you have to wrap it uh, yeah. with these guys, and that's it. Yeah. So this then, what it does is it positions it inside a template literal, and... Yeah, this is where I was going next. So this infer num extends number, then mm -hmm. basically like if we don't have this, then it just positions it as a string. But having this uh, number inside there means we get to extract out, basically call number on it. So this doesn't work with floats, right? Because you can't represent floats in TypeScript. Yeah, I, it's, it's curious that, uh, that this, doesn't, uh, uh, this doesn't work that way. Like, yep. oh, it does work with floats. Oh. Right. Oh, that's, oh. that's pretty impressive. Okay, wow. Yes. Um, I, did, I genuinely didn't know that you could express floats in TypeScript. I guess there's no use case for them whatsoever, but it's cool that you can. Yeah, it is cool. And uh, wow. I'll show you, there's a there's a prior solution uh, that has like a really beautiful example, and it's integer. Uh, this mm. is just like a geek moment. This is not related to this challenge, but I can't help but show you because I feel like you'll really appreciate it. This is the solution. Mm. Nice. And yeah, that's really interesting. The way this wow. works is that big ints are integers. They're not. They don't have a, a mantissa. They don't have a like a floating point. They don't have a decimal component, a fractional mm -hmm. component. And so you can actually even cast. In fact, I wonder if this will pass if we do this. Uh, no, it does. Oh wait, I have to say. Oh, it is a string in the input. Hmm. We would have to do a transformation on it, basically. Somewhere. So oh yeah, right. Here, right, right. Yeah, right. we would have to get that perfect okay yeah but anyway uh yeah you can do some funny i like i just love this example because actually this solution for this other challenge integer most of them are very complex uh to solve this mm -hmm. but this one just takes the it's just a smarter not harder type approach and i, I really like it um okay i love the hacks yeah exactly uh so let me show you there's a bunch of i prepared a bunch of uh or found a bunch of solutions that people have from the community uh, this mm -hmm. is a very typical one that people do. Is this gonna? Is this passing? What's going? Oh, because we, because <laughs> we we messed that one up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've seen this kind of thing before. I I like to use the little uh, emoji, but usually people will put like a one there. Have you? Are you familiar mm -hmm. with this kind of thing? Yep. This is. Um basically using uh, a length property on an array to basically build up a tuple to to add something together. Yep. I've seen Anurag Hasra use this a lot, you know, for like building like math stuff in TypeScript and using times and add and subtract and all this math stuff. Yes. And and a lot of times people will put a like unknown here um, or they'll put any or something else. And I just kind of mm. like using that abacus emoji because it makes it, I don't know, it's fun, but also it makes it really clear that this value is never ever used. We're only ever checking that, we're never returning the thing that's inside. We're just using the length and as, like you said, as a counter. Um, mm -hmm. there, there is a bit of uh, um, like if you, there's a problem that you can hit. This is a nope. So this one, this one fails the last test, and it fails because it will just recurse infinitely, um, because it never actually checks that t is a number. Because if t is doesn't extend this value, 
it will just keep counting. Um, so this is a problem that I saw. Sometimes people submit solutions that don't work. Mm, yeah, I see. So if T extends, so just to uncomment the previous solution, then mm -hmm. we're doing basically a guard against infinite recursion on this yes. layer there. I yep. see. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Um, so I just thought I would put that in there. I like sometimes it's nice. It can be fun to see like the things that people got stuck on. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and this then, is interesting to me too. I mean, I've been focused a lot with my course on like uh, on real world solutions on like applying this stuff into like yeah. real life. Yes. And so like I've I've sort of like it's been a while since I dived into like actually this really insane, useless, essentially like yes. uh, how much like a single div CSS style of TypeScript. It's it's just mad to me. That's yes, so cool. it is. It is a it is a wacky and wild world that we find ourselves in. Okay, uh, yeah. oh <laughs> this is the um, uh, this is the last one. This this solver UID eleven uh, has done all of the challenges. I think there's only around five people or so that have solved all of the challenges. And I thought I would just kind of rip through what the explanation or what the solution is. Um, mm. They use a lot of helper types, and I, I really like that. It can be very helpful when you're solving complicated problems. And again, we we showed kind of like short examples to solving them, but it didn't used to be this easy. So at the time this person wrote this, there wasn't that syntax in, in, in TypeScript that we used uh, originally. So mm -hmm. yeah, basically just starting from the bottom. So they come in to number. This is the entry point. And then they do this num to number, string to num. So looking at string, uh, let's look at, yeah, let's look at string to num first, just from a call order perspective. So mm. yeah, we're seeing that they're, they have this digit type. Digit is just a hard-coded list of all of the, if you hover over here, it's just all the digits as strings. And we're taking a particular string uh, or and uh, taking that and seeing whether or not it extends that union and then we're kind of adding the digits up, and this this allows this approach allows you to circumnavigate recursion limits a little bit. So instead of having to recurse nine times when you see a nine, they just preload like a mapping structure to multiply digits. Wow! So we're still using counters. And so this then is basically taking in this n extends num, yes. which uh, which and what's num then a read only? Oh, I see. This is like your abacus array, and then. Inside this one, it's just like a single n, then two, then three, then that's yeah, just mad. Exactly, and it's a time is table. A, yeah, this is a technique that a lot of people use to kind of get around recursion limits, so that you don't have to keep going so many times. Um, there are a few solutions like that, and yeah, I mean the rest of it follows pretty. I mean we don't have to go line by line, but it you know you're adding up those uh, those arrays, like uh, kind of summing them together. And you can just do that with sp spreading them together in this case. Cause again, we don't care ever about the contents of the tuples. We just care about their length because that's the thing that we're using and we're going to end up checking later. Um, mm. and that's what num to number actually does. It just checks the length. So it's just a little helper that, um, that checks the length after we sum them all up. So because yeah. each num here is not actually a num, it's a tuple. It's a tuple, right. Of a certain size, so wow. Um, but cool. So, yeah, this is this is OG stuff. This is like hardcore pre four point eight stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a big feature uh, for people that do stuff like this. Uh, so cool. All right, that's it for that one.